Hello and welcome to For The Drive. In today's video, I am going to be doing some home improvements to the Jag XE. Yes, you heard right, my friends. Uh, after all this time saying I'm, I'm never gonna touch the car with any tools, I'm gonna let professional people deal with it throughout. Uh, I'm now picking up some tools just to do some minor tweaks. Nothing major, don't worry, I'm not gonna start getting hacksaws and, and drills and start doing some silly stuff, but uh, just adding a few bits and pieces and changing things over. Uh, I'll talk you through it as I go through, so let's get on with it. So first thing I'm gonna be doing today is I'm changing my air filter. Uh, I've, the Santa one is fine, but because uh, I want to increase the power, I want to buy, like, really desperately trying to sort out upping it to about 300 brake and 300 pounds of foot torque. The exhaust is better flowing now because there's no baffle at the rear end. I just thought I'd just increase the, uh, as, as make a better quality filter if I can. And this one claims to, BMC claim to give you about 30% extra airflow and it's a, a lifetime one that you just re-oil every now and then, like you service it, you don't replace it. So first things first, let's get the old one out and get this one in. Now, if you guys have never seen the engine bay of a Jaguar XE, it's nothing exciting, but there you go. I definitely think you could fit a V8 in that though. Look at all that space. Definitely think you could fit a V8 in that. That is the air filter change. That was not easy. Jaguar really don't want you to do it yourself. I had torque screws and so many of them and they're really fiddly. So that was uh, not pleasant, but in mind it's done. The new one is in, the other one is disgusting. I mean, that was supposedly changed August. Anyway, right, on to the next one. So the next uh, item on my list of uh, home DIY mods is my number plate. I mean, there's actually nothing wrong with that one, but uh, I am going to France in the beginning of December uh, and the XE's traveling with me, luckily, so I'm finally taking the XE abroad. Um, so instead of having the horrible like blue GB stickers stuck all over the car that you legally should have, I just thought, well, I'll get some uh, GB plates and get, basically get some made so I can actually just put them on there and it's permanently so I can take it aboard no matter what. So, but I've also, uh, yeah, I couldn't resist myself. I had to get the For The Drive brand on the number plates. Uh, I really want to get some personalized number plates with FTD in the actual like registration. Um, that's slow down on my list of mods right now. There's so many other things I want to do, but it will come eventually. But at the moment I thought this is the next best thing. So uh, let's get these swapped over. I don't know if you can see that, it's actually aluminium. They've actually put aluminium plates on. Strange. Now, I know what you're going to say, because I'm annoyed as well. I know they don't technically match the fact that I need to get black, well, blue and black uh, screw covers. Uh, I did actually buy them. And hilariously, the screws that come with the new ones are a smaller diameter than the ones already on there. So they actually just pull straight off. So I put them on temporarily, just so they're legal. Uh, and then I will go and grab some uh, self-adhesive pads and some different screws as well. So I can basically put them on with the right colors because that's really irritating. I can't jag do anything normal. Right, anyway, on to the back one. Now this one's a bit different because I actually bought a standard size plate, but I'll get to my boot and shut it for you so you can actually see what I'm on about. If you look at the number plate, it's certainly not a standard size. So I'm gonna, th I think it's gonna look good, but we shall see what it actually looks like with a much smaller, neater plate. Uh, I actually don't think it looks pretty. I think it looks pretty good actually. 
it's very, it's very small. Um, every time I look, it looks a bit strange compared to because I've had it over a year with the standard one, but it, you know, it's actually not bad. Let's move on to the final one, which is a little bit of a test in this big black sausage. Uh, I've got some like 10 mil sound deadening, like self-adhesive foam. Um, I mean, you guys have probably already seen the exhaust video. I'm so happy though, like with the sound, like it's fine. And when I want it inside the car, I'm loving every like decibel I get, but I still kind of want to dull a little bit of the mundane driving. I've bought this stuff. I'm going to put it underneath the boot lining where my spare wheel is and stuff like that. I'm going to put it under there. And I'm actually doing a long journey today. Um, up to Bath to see some friends. So it'll actually be a perfect test to see whether that knocks out any of the frequencies that I don't want there, like for normal drive, motorway driving and things. Uh, and if so, then what I might do at a later date is actually cut it in. Um, I just don't want to like, stick it all the way to all the underneath all the metalwork and then go, that make no difference. And I'm gonna rip it all off. So let's roll it. I'm just gonna unwrap it and we'll shall put it in and see what it looks like. So I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get this to sit on top because this is actually quite a lot thicker. Um, like there was actually a lot more less less clearance between this and the bits it sits on. So I might actually end up just putting this back in and that back on top. Now I know what you guys are thinking. You're saying you should just really cut it in, Graham, because you know, stop really being a wimp fan. But I don't know if you guys have ever had to deal with like mainstream deals before, but some of them can be pretty uh, problematic. So I don't want to give them any ammunition to start causing me issues. I've already kind of like changed the exhaust, which is a problem. Changed the air filter, they're probably going to have a hissy fit with. Um, I've kept both the old back boxes and the standard air filters, so I can change it back if they if I fear that they're going to be a problem or they start kicking up fuss and go, look, here you go, change it back. But if I start doing stuff that's a problem to replace or even like irreparable or permanent change, I'm just thinking they could just they could just rinse me so badly and I don't really want to deal with that kind of legal and finance by battle. It's just so I don't, this is just a test. So I'll do my round trip to my friend's house down in Bath today, hopefully. Um, and see what that comes up with. But if it doesn't work, it wasn't that expensive, so fine, whatever. If it does, then great, and I will actually cut it so it disappears underneath all around the wheel. At like every nook and cranny I can fit a piece of this in, it will go. That is the end of the video. I'm actually now going to pop off to uh, Halfords or whatever, whatever like car hardware store I can find um, to get some bigger screws and to get some bloody pads, like self adhesive pads for the front of those so the actual bits and pieces are uh, the right colour because that is going to annoy me. I'll give you a bit, guys, update probably on the social medias about whether the foam is doing anything uh, in terms of whether it's actually knocking it off. Um, and I might do a quick video of me actually cutting it in, but to be fair, that might just be, be a lot of me swearing and uh, angry faces and me walking away and then cutting and then coming back. So I don't know, I shall see. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.